what's up everybody welcome to BioS3 Raw TV today we're gonna go a little response to a, um, a comment on my Facebook by Colleen it's just easier to do a video than it was to try to type all that stuff out because I hate typing <laughs> so pretty much it's just easier to talk now Colleen after I posted the video about the um, IFOM and stuff and health and now what I was trying to get at it wasn't really to do about health it was about uh, people that do uh, the flexible dieting that are not really in the fitness industry it's more to try to be quote-unquote healthy that load themselves up on food and make fun of other people. It is the IFOM, flexible dieting, junk food eaters that like to make fun of everybody. They fuck with them constantly. And it's not the people that are eating clean foods that are fucking with people. That was the whole point of the, the, the video. Excuse me. Now, Colleen wanted to know about health. And competition, is competition healthy? And she pointed out to the fact that Carrie had made the videos about feeling tired, etc., etc., and I said, well, here's the situation. Carrie doesn't get sick. I mean, she never gets sick anymore. She eats micro-dense foods year-round now, okay, which she didn't do when I first met her, and she was getting sick more then. She rests pretty much all the time. I mean, she gets seven to eight hours of sleep every night. Um, she's strong muscularly. She's cardiovascularly fit. Her blood work is stellar. The, the doctor said it's the best blood work he's seen in anybody in a long time. There is, I mean, her skin is good. I mean, there is nothing pointing to the fact that there's anything unhealthy about her whatsoever. Zero zero problems health-wise at all. She does a keto diet, she does competition, she diets down for competitions, but in her video vlog she talks about being tired. She talks about not being able to sustain the body fat that she's at. Now, I think that's where Colleen, you're getting confused. Now, here's the situation, and, and for those of you who are like, Jerry's fucking stupid, he doesn't know anything about science. Now, I may talk like a thug sometimes and I may some, say some shit that you know, is amusing and sounds fucking stupid, but I'm not a fucking retard. I understand this stuff a lot better than a lot of people out there. And I actually, through applying it and understand it more, I'm going to explain it now. As you start to diet down, and anybody who's dieted down for a competition understands this, your body burns fuel. And what fuel is, is some people are like, well, carbohydrates are fuel. Technically, glucose is fuel, okay? And everything gets broken down into the glucose, whether it's proteins, carbohydrates, all that shit gets broken down into glucose. Now, that process is called gluconogenesis, the creation of glucose. Now, as you're giving your body carbohydrates, your body has an easier, for, easier way of breaking those down and making glucose. Turning glucose from protein into glucose via gluconogenesis is more difficult. Okay? Now what happens is, as the body tries to convert that into glucose, it taxes the body even more. You're a little more tired. Okay? So even though technically you're healthy and everything is fine, you're now more tired. Okay? Now, if you pull carbs even further and you go into like a keto diet, your body's not burning ketones. Now, your brain can use ketones 100% fine. It uses them just as effectively as carbohydrates. Otherwise, you would fucking pass out and die if it couldn't. But it can, okay? Once it makes the conversion to ketosis, it can burn the ketones just fine for energy. And there's pretty much an unlimited supply of body fat on your body to burn those ketones. Now, here lies the problem. As the body's breaking down the body fat into ketones and using them as for energy, it takes a lot more oxygen. It's actually harder to break the body fat down to make the ketones, to burn the ketones, than it is to break a carbohydrate down into glucose. So now what happens is you're even more tired. You're drained. You don't feel good. Now you get in the gym and you're still muscularly strong. Can you still use the same weights? Your blood work is fine. You're not sick. However, you're tired. And you're tired because your body is pushing to try to burn body fat. And that's what it feels like to burn body fat. There is a specific point that you'll know when you start to get in. This doesn't happen through the whole diet. Carrie can maintain a keto diet all year long, but when you get to a certain point of body fat, the body does not want to get rid of that body fat. That's for an emergency in case you're dying. So it's going to make it difficult. So now what it does is actually send signals to your brain that tells you that you're extremely hungry. Okay? That hunger, if you don't know enough to not give into it, can cause problems. Eating disorders, stuff like that. However, it's a false hunger. You are not dying. You're not going to die. You have plenty of body fat on your body. You're not going to die. However, in the wild, in survival, it is the signal to let you know you're going to die if you don't do something. Now, you're a bodybuilder, so you understand you're controlling everything. Your brain doesn't know about bodybuilding, okay? It's not meant for fucking bodybuilding, so I have no idea. So now what happens is, as you're progressing in this diet and you're getting leaner, the brain goes, oh, fuck, you know, I'm losing more and more fat. It makes it harder to break it down. Now, as you're breaking it down, more oxygen, you'll notice that you yawn more. You're trying to bring in more oxygen. You sleep 10 hours a night, you're yawning. Why? Because you need more oxygen to access the fat, and that's how the fat is burnt. Now, it goes into the calories can, uh, calories in, calories out thing, but the bottom line is no matter what you're doing, when you start to burn body fat and get down to being that lean for competition, it doesn't really matter the foods that you're eating, especially 
if you know you're doing the calories in, calories out, you're still burning body fat to make up that deficit. Matt Ogus was a prime example of how he dieted for his last shows. He ate Chipotle every day leading up to the show. Now, some people would be like, hey, that's flexible dieting, that's this. At the end of that competition, his last show, he flat out said, I'm fucking exhausted, I'm burnt out, I'm tired. It was the same feeling because he got that lean. It was about being lean and not necessarily about the foods you're eating. So, you see, there is a big difference between people that are like, oh, I have one this. Your body goes through the same fucking things. Whether it's bro foods or flexible dieting, it's the same fucking things. And it is not sustainable, not because it's not healthy, but it's because work suffers, relationships suffer, all that stuff suffers because of the tiredness of your body trying to break that down. Now, you know, technically, you know, if your body was fucked up, it wouldn't bounce right back like that. Now, after the competition, you're tired, you're depleted, you're banged up, all this stuff. But micronutrient as far as vitamins and minerals, you're fine. Macronutrients, you're getting them. However, it's hard to burn body fat. Now, the first fucking meal after the show, if you have some carbohydrates, let's put 35 to 40 grams of carbohydrates in your body, you feel perfect. Done. There's no more tiredness. There's no more fatigue. There's, not, there's nothing. There's no more weakness. There's nothing. Your brain now has that form of glucose that is uh, that carbohydrate that's a form of glucose that'll be broken out into glucose. And it's easy for it to break down and burn, and it is fine. The signals start to go away. The tired signal goes away. The hunger goes away. Everything goes away. However, when you wake up the next morning, you are extremely hungry and irritable because the blood sugar starts to drop. Okay, not to a dangerous level, but as it drops, the signal goes back to the brain again to go, oh, shit, here we go again. And it literally sends that signal back to the brain. So you see, it's a, a mix of, of false signals to the brain that really fuck people up that they don't understand. This is part of what I do, okay? I interpret those signals, and this is why all these calories in, calories out guys and girls, it, it, it's so far beyond that if you want to be successful for long term. Now, you said something, uh, Colleen said something about, well, what, you know, some of these girls say down the road it messes them up. Here's 10 years that Carrie's been doing this. She's been on the national level since 2009, and every single year she gets right back down to competition shape. We do the same thing every year. There's no metabolic damage. There's no issues. We know exactly what's going on with her body because we interpret the signals and we know hormonally what's going on with her by using certain foods. You cannot control the hormones as well using the junk foods. It just doesn't happen. And that's why the people that are eating the flexible dieting are so against you know, the, the, the bro foods and it's so unhealthy. It's not unhealthy. You're still getting micro and macronutrients. It's not the fucking, that's not what it is. Okay, it has nothing to do with fucking health. It has to do with the fact that your brain perceives that it's dying and you don't know how to deal with that. Okay, so what you do is you eat those foods that cause a dopamine and a serotonin rush that give you a feel good. There's no reason for a person to say, I'm never fucking taking Pop Tarts and eating sweet potatoes. It's the same fucking thing when it's broken down into glucose. But the problem is they can't let go of that food. That's a mental thing. Okay, so if from person to person, it's very mental. But the bottom line is you have someone like Carrie who is mentally strong enough to do the diet. We understand what the signals are to her brain, and she's perfectly healthy. That's the ideal situation to be in, period. Understanding and knowledge is the key. It's not about who's right and wrong. It's about interpreting the person's body and knowing what's actually going on. So I hope this explains a little bit, a little better, as to how these things work, why it's technically unhealthy. Those people that diet themselves and fuck themselves up by starving themselves, yes, that's unhealthy, okay? They're micro and macro-based deficiencies based on what they're eating, and they're killing themselves. Cortisol levels go up. And there's a lot of things that go on with that, but what we do is unhealthy. What I do is not unhealthy. Is it sustainable? No, and that's specifically because of those false signals to the brain that interfere with the rest of your life. It has nothing to do with the fact that you're going to fucking drop dead or five years from now you're not going to feel good. It has nothing to do with that, okay? Because you're not depleting the... When long-term damage is done, it is micronutrient-dense... Uh, excuse me, micronutrient-based that causes the issues. All disease and issues that you have in life are micronutrient based. It's all from that. Okay? So as long as your micronutrients are, are completely taken care of, heart, brain, skin, lungs, kidneys, blood, everything is fine. Biowestertraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biowestertraining.com is the blog and where this is the explanation bicep and we're out.